Good evening. Hello, hello. Hey, John Early. Hey, BFG. How you doing? Very festive, yes. I, I debated taking the Christmas decorations down, but it's not New Year's yet. I usually keep them up. I mean, we still have our tree up and everything, and the tree's probably going to be up until, <laughs> I'm thinking, probably mid-January, just because I know I'm going to be busy. So I always do the uh, the extended holiday um, decorations. So, But this stuff will come, come down for... Uh, next week's streams, I think, probably. How you doing? Good evening. Alrighty. So, I don't usually stream on Tuesdays, but um, I figured Captain Algebra is not streaming tonight, as far as I know. And I have this new game that I've been talking about on the Twitter. Yeah, the 12 Days of Christmas. Um, and I want I, 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 I know I'm going to have not much time to stream for the next uh, few weeks, so I wanted to get it Get it done while it's still relevant. Um, Wonder Woman 84 is very cheesy, <laughs> cheesier than Aqua Bro. I, we're going to watch Wonder Woman 84, but I have not heard good things about it. Traditional trees should be up until February 2nd, but at a minimum, January 6th. Is that true? Really? February 2nd. Okay. All right. That, that buys me some time. Thank you. I can definitely get it, get it down before February 2nd. I think the longest I had a tree up was in my college uh, senior suite um, in our dorm. We had we had our tree up until we moved out in the spring, and so by the time we dragged that tree out of the building, it was completely desiccated, and we left a trail of pine needles inside the suite, of course, down the hall, to the elevator, through the basement, outside, until we were able to discard of it. It was clearly a fire hazard. And, uh, and I'm a little bit embarrassed, but uh, you have a suite of people who are not the most responsible or, and or very busy, um, who also like Christmas trees, and it just didn't seem to be a high priority to, to take it down. Um, but yeah, February 2nd. Okay, I can do that. Excellent. <laughs> um, so yes, so this is a special stream for a new homebrew game. Um, it's called Chum Lee's. Adventure, the quest for Pinky. Uh, there's that ring light thing again. I don't know how, how people, how do you live streamers deal with this? I guess you have to get like the right angle. I don't know. Um, this is a, a homebrew game based on uh, Pawn Stars starring Chum Lee. It was premiered, uh, it was teased last night in the episode of Pawn Stars. And um, it's on Kickstarter now. There's a link in the description. It is... Um, fully funded the the goal was fifteen thousand dollars and they they met that goal in less than 24 hours which is pretty awesome but keep getting the word out there i have played a little bit of this game so i already know that it's it's pretty fun i'm going to do a detailed review of it um after mid-january and uh yeah i figured i would stream a little bit to to showcase it so uh there are a couple videos out there already about it john riggs uh, did a, a, a mini review and uh, default gen on YouTube. Uh, Tyler Wilkins, he did a review as well. I haven't watched either of them because I don't like other people's reviews to color my my opinions before I do my review. Um, and certainly before I, I keep playing the game, so I have avoided those. But uh, in case you don't know who I am, if anybody's watching who doesn't know who I am, I am EC Myers uh, Vids, Eugene Myers. I... Stream uh, NES games every Wednesday night from my collection, games that I have owned but do not have not played before, and uh, this is a, a new game in my collection, so uh, I'm going to get started. So if you look at the title screen, hey Iron, I'm quite bad at the game, I died a lot at the first boss. So like I said, I played a, a bit of this game already, I think I got to um, the third stage, and uh, I wanted to keep playing, but I had to get back to work. Um, and yeah, the, the, the boss, the first boss took me a little while to figure out, um, what to do. So there are going to be some spoilers in this, in this, in this, if you keep watching. Um, but, uh, it's fun. It's fun. So if you look at the title screen, uh, you can probably tell like that it is a, um, an homage to Kung Fu, uh, the classic, uh, black box NES game, which I'm embarrassed. I didn't figure that out sooner because if you look at the box art, of course, um, even the logo here, it just didn't click until I saw this title screen. And I streamed Kung Fu as part of my my weekly NES Alphanumeric uh, stream. And uh, I liked the game, but it was very, very challenging. And so when I saw this, I was both excited and also a little bit apprehensive because um, I know how difficult 
kung fu is like I, I think i got to the third stage of kung fu but it took me like an hour and a half or something to get that far and i never beat the game i think i can beat this game uh well but we'll see and there's not really a, a, a difficulty level here here's some cool stuff well maybe i'll save that um so there's an in honor of uh, which honors some some uh, Pawn Star greats. And then there are credits, of course, for the game, which we can go through that. Um, programming by Kevin Hanley, uh, Kahan Games, who um, most recently programmed NES Escape. Um, graphics, John Piranak, Pika Brews, uh, music and SFX, sound effects by Thomas, uh, the human Thomas, and beta testing Brian Sitterlet. Um, I guess Blurry Pixels, is that one? I'm not sure if that's what... I guess that Blurry Sprites, I guess, is that... Actually, I actually don't know who Blurry Sprites is. Um, Kahan, Human Thomas, and Pika Bruce, I know. I don't know who Blurry Sprites is. But um, anyway, so those are the credits. And you can do two-player alternating. And I'll save, save the on honor of for when you get the game. Um, and I'm just going to get started. So let me know if the audio sounds okay to you guys. So the other thing was also I started playing the game and I started going to the right, which is ridiculous. So you can kick... Why are you kicking these old people? Um, you can kick, you can punch, and you can um, you can jump, and you can also jump kick. So getting the timing down. Um, yeah. So the, the you'll see when I get to the boss, I'll I'll discuss a little bit more. I'm not doing so great here actually. So these little guys come running in, these old ladies. So I'll be honest, I have not. I have not. I don't have. I don't have cable, so I haven't really seen a lot of the show Pawn Stars, um, except for like clips over the years that have been about the Nintendo, oddly enough, uh, because people bring N NES stuff in all the time, and those clips kind of get circulated. It's like, oh, this is a really rare game. How much is this thing worth? Um, and in fact, in the episode that they had last night, they were sharing. Was it the M? Is it the M82? Like the 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 demo unit that they had in stores for NES games, so you would have like a big machine that had 10 cartridge slots in it and people could, could play any of the games in there. And it was neat because they had uh, two of Kevin's other games, other homebrew games, loaded up in the thing, um, which is neat. And uh, he said on Twitter that apparently it doesn't, there's GT-ROM games, GT games with the GT-ROM uh, mappers uh, don't play very well on that thing, which is kind of interesting because you'd think it would just be a normal NES. All right, let me pause for a second. I see people in the chat here. Jay, you can't repeat the past. Oh, you're quoting lines from from Justice League, I guess. Put a nine-minute clip online of it today on YouTube. Okay, the game? Cool. I mean, I, I don't know how, how long it would take to speedrun this game. But uh, I'm very curious to see... So I never beat a full loop of Kung Fu. I assume the game just keeps looping around, and you can get a higher score. So, oh, okay. So here, it was interesting. I thought that I needed to kind of do a... Uh, head I kind of needed to do a, a kick him in the head or something when he's coming by oh so there's also a timer <laughs> but I discovered that you can actually just get really close and yeah, I'm gonna die here you can get close enough to uh, to attack him and then you just kind of have to dodge and I usually will wait for him to come back and you can kick him in the head sometimes I'm just gonna spam him like that I'm not gonna have enough time so I'm gonna die in a second here whoops okay screw that up I was taking too long because I was I was talking, I guess. Uh, but look at if, looking at this, and if you know Kung Fu, uh, if you know the Kung Fu NES game, um, like the aesthetic of this is very similar. Um, it was just like the the HUD, you know, at the top of the screen is very similar to the NES game. With the four boxes for each of the of the stages, the lives. That's Pinky up there. So I guess you accumulate more Pinkies as you loop through the game. I have not yet saved Pinky. Um, and the uh, graphics are really really nice. I like I like the graphics. The uh, Kung Fu NES game was really cool because you had such a big sprite, but the the, the backgrounds were pretty pretty plain. Um, and I have to say, like, I haven't played Kung Fu in a long time, but I think this controls better. Um, the reach is a little bit shorter for for the attacks, which adds some challenge to it. And um, and it just it just feels a little bit more fluid. Like I, with Kung Fu, it just felt felt very dated, you know. And this has borrowed some of the style of Kung Fu, but has definitely improved on the gameplay um, for sure. Uh, the extra. Oh, they showed that clip. Yeah, I think I saw somebody linking that if they'd missed it. Um, so that's cool. I'll have to I'll have to share that one. Hey, Sean, how are you doing, Sean Robinson? I'm listening to um, the 
latest episode of Assembly Line, and it is very cool to hear you, your voice and Dead Eye's voice on uh, on the podcast. Um, it's really a nice surprise to have you guys on the uh, on the show. So. Yeah, it takes me a long time to listen to podcasts now because I only do it. I only listen really when I'm walking my dog, and so I listen to it in like 15 to 30 minute increments, depending on how long the walk is. And in the winter, especially when I'm busy, his walk, his walks end up being shorter than they should be, unfortunately. So yeah, you can't dilly dally here because there's a lot of uh, there's not much time that 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 adds to the challenge. So if I get all the way to the end, so yeah, so I've I've been able to kick him in the head as he comes flying by here. Like that. That's what I thought I had to do, but you can also just do this and then just like get out of his way. And I'm just gonna wait over here because by the time I get over there, he's going to be running at me again. And you have more reach when you punch. So I'm just hoping that I can beat him before the uh, time runs out. So you get that little warning, I guess that he's gonna do his, uh, his belly buster, is that what it's called? So yeah, they talked about this in the in the show too, which was neat. All right, so that's stage one here. And there are no continues as well, so you just kind of have to power through it. You know, it's it's pretty neat. I'm also very glad to see that it works on my AVS, unlike um, unlike Jane Silent Bob's uh, Mall Brawl. I should have tested it out before I got started. So yeah, it was silly that I tried to go the other direction because um, he obviously he starts walking in the direction you're supposed to go in. The Great Gatsby, the great American novel. Oh, okay. No, I've read the novel several times, but I don't recall that line. That's actually funny because The Great Gatsby, um, Kevin Hanley, who programmed this game, is a huge fan of The Great Gatsby. And in fact, for a while, was working on a, an NES port based on the Flash, Flash game Excuse me, that was... Uh, circulating the internet some time ago um yeah i'm really bad with quotes by the way john i'm sorry if i disappointed you but i just do not recall quotes unless they're quotes that i use very often or that i hear a lot of other people repeat but i really do like the novel nothing like beating up little kids right so I don't think I have to duck, but like I said, I think his punch has more range than his kick, oddly enough. It seems a little strange, but... Like, the, 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 the attacks that you have in Kung Fu are a little bit more... I wouldn't say that they're more robust, but they feel they have more, more range on them. But then again, I think that the, um, the hitboxes in Kung Fu are probably not as, as good. I meant to... I'll pro I will replay Kung Fu before I do my review of this game because I think that it's it's relevant, but immediately I had a lot more fun playing this than, um, than Kung Fu, honestly. Part of that being I was making more progress. So you saw that I collected, every now and then you can collect a shoe that's in the background, like up up in the on the shelf, and I didn't know that was a shoe until I looked in the manual. Um, I honestly thought that it was a Famicom because it had the right, the right colors and everything. There was a cool... Um, shoe phone on the show last night which I would really want. I mean, I'm a huge um, I'm a huge how did I do this before? I'm a huge uh, Get Smart fan. Okay, I need to get closer. There we go. I always wanted a shoe phone. Of course, it would have to be wireless. So this one's not too bad. I assume that it gets harder on second loop too. Whoops. It's not, not enough range there. We can do like f flying uh, jump kicks and things. Oh, oh shoot. Did I get him? Did it count? No, it did not count. Wow, okay. Talking about it not being as hard as Kung Fu and I'm, I'm dying. Someone write the hat throwing movement equation so he can finish it. <laughs> yeah, missed it by that much. Exactly. Um, yeah, that I, he said that, I, I remember in an, in an episode, he said that the original creators of the game wanted to work with him on it, and then at some point, I think they were taking it over, and, and I don't know what happened after that. I really want that game, though. The Flash game was fantastic, and it is such a cool mechanic, and so bizarre to be playing a game based on The Great Gatsby, that I would love to, to get to play that on an NES. Plus, Flash is, like, retired now. Like, you can't... Or soon to be, right? You can't... Uh, oh, I'm facing the wrong way. You can't... Um, eh. 
You can't play that game unless I think it might have been archived somewhere. I don't know. It's pretty neat. Yeah, so it's not too too bad. I know that the next level gets a little bit tricky. Um, things start moving faster, and probably they take more more hit points off of you. I would think. Definitely interested to see how the how the difficulty scales as you play this. Whoops. And I do wish I was more I, I knew more about Pawn Stars to get full appreciation from this. I'm really mostly looking at it from like a game perspective. Um, I mean you've, we've all played licensed games on things that we haven't had any experience with. And it's all about the gameplay, right? Last I heard, the original creators had taken it back. Yeah, that's what I heard too, Sean, but I don't know if they're actually actively working on it or not. Does the game an audio, like, microphone and game sound okay to you guys? Chumley, Chumley, where are you? Wait, Pinky's talking? So when I first played this, I thought, in my head, I thought I thought Chumley was calling for Pinky, but is Pinky calling for Chumley? Is, Ch is Pinky's quest... Is, that, that should be part of the game. Like you should be able to play as Pinky looking for um, looking for Chum Lee. Uh, thank you, Sean. Audio's perfect. Thank you, BFG. Watch Mojo has made a bunch of fun top ten videos about items on Pawn Stars. Okay, I'll have to look for that. I like the show. I would I would I should watch it more often. Um, I borrowed a friend's um, access last night so that I could I could watch it and I I was going to try to record it um, and upload it or share it with folks who don't have access to it. But I'm glad they they put that clip up. But they did like a three part skit. Um, about about this game about Kevin, like they um, they really highlighted his his work and uh, talked up homebrews. They were like homebrews are the next the next big thing. Um, see, is it just me or does that sort of look like a Famicom? Like it could be could be a Famicom, but it's a shoe. I'm just a little disappointed that there aren't more like NESs and things sprinkled throughout the game as bonus levels, bonus uh, points. But you know, shoes are nice. Oof. Oh man. Okay. I'm trying to remember what the boss is at the end of this one. Oh, the, there are these birds that come through. I don't. They don't really do anything. I think. Oh, there's like. I did get to the next stage. There's like the the fans start dropping on you. Um, the birds. I don't know if if they will hurt me or if they're just up there in case I happen to jump or if I'm supposed to try to kill them or whatnot. But I'm just kind of avoiding them. Yeah, and uh, my son was was down here. Um, well, I guess up here now because he's down in the basement. He came up. I sent him upstairs to play Luigi's Mansion Three. He just got Luigi's Mansion Three for Christmas, and he already has beaten it. Okay. Well, oh, right. Okay. Let's see, how did I do? Oh, right. Okay, I know this one. Okay. I know, well, it looks like I I know it, but I don't actually. Okay. Okay. So I do this. Don't jump. Jump. Duck. Oh, shoot. Okay. You're, there's a safe spot there, but I missed it. And game over. So we're going to do that again. So yeah, no continues. I don't know if there are like secret codes or something in here. Up, 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 down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. Yeah. It's not really a, a, such a thing in homebrews. I know there are secret codes in some games. But that doesn't seem to be a common thing. Um, but this is like got that addictive gameplay to it where um, once you're done you kind of want to keep keep going and give it another try I'm not huge on um, arcade game type games where the point is to get a high score but this is also fun like I, I can see myself like this would be a great game to like kind of zone out to um, once I get better at it and um, you know if I just have like a little time to play I would, I would pop this thing in I'm just going to race them until I get to the end and see what happens. Oh no, they're... okay, great. So... Yeah, he's got really not much reach on his uh, kicks there. No offense, Chumley. So you can probably kick him in the face like as he's going by. But I thought I had to do it that way when I was playing the first time and I kept running out of time. So...
It was really funny, everyone trying to guess what game Kevin was working on. I mean... This came out of nowhere. Like, I never would have guessed Pawn Stars in a million years. Never. Um... But, you know, people were thinking Stranger Things, but they've been, they've made retro-style games before. Um, you know, thinking about, like, the Goldbergs or something like that set in the 80s. Um, it kind of looked like it was glitching there a little bit. Yeah, there's, like, so many characters on the screen at a time on this one that, that um, you get a lot of that. Uh, not slow down, necessarily, but you get the, the, the pixels um, blinking in and out. Oh, okay. Hold on a second here. What did you just watch? Hey, zombie. What did you just watch? <laughs> uh, hey, game beaters. How are you doing? This game looks like a lot of fun. Sean says, in Bovinium Quest, if you enter the Konami code, the screen goes black and says, shame on you, and crashes. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Like, I, I know some, even Konami started doing stuff like that. Like, you know, you, you immediately die or something if you put the Konami code in or something like that. Hey, Mazin, what kind of kung fu is this? This is a, this is 2020 kung fu. How you doing, sir? 2020 kung fu. This is kung fu... Actually, this makes sense. This is like this is the kung fu that like a normal person would do, <laughs> like just an average person who has no actual martial arts training. And I actually don't know if Chun Li has any martial arts training, but like this is like my speed. This is what I would be able to manage. I don't think I'd even be able to take all these kids out, you know, or these old ladies. But um, I can't I can't complain about his fighting prowess when I know I would not be doing very much better in person so it's just it's all verisimilitude it's all it's all part of the, the reality because it's a reality show um yeah okay so i'm gonna go over here i'm definitely interested to see what the speed run record of this game is going to be probably a white hat 94 is going to get it So yeah, like I said, um, this game's on Kickstarter now. It has been funded. It is a fully funded game. It is definitely coming out. Um, and they have like three different cartridge variants. Um, this is the blue one. They've got like a yellow one. And I think, is there a red one? A green one. There's a green one. And they each come with different things. Like this has, um, this has a sticker. And there's like a sticker of Pinky that comes with it as well. Um, there's a... Uh, this the the case the sleeve for the game is pretty cool it's got like the logo and this nice embossed thing that kevin does and um there's like all sorts of other stuff you can get t-shirts you can get keychains you know if you're a big pawn stars fan you can get that stuff and i think that the idea is that this game is going to be for sale in the store which is also pretty neat hey yugoslav <laughs> chong <Lee. laughs> Blue, orange, green, and yellow. Thank you, Sean. Like the Power Rangers, like some weird Power Rangers. Orange, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's kind of, kind of cool. Like, I got my copy of Trophy today, which I probably should have brought upstairs. Um, and it's also, a bl I got the blue cartridge. The only reason I didn't get the limited edition is because I like the art on the blue cartridge more. And I like the blue cartridge. And so I missed out on, like, the poster and the letter and all that stuff. Um, but I would have gotten the limited edition if it had been different colors. Um, so I just got the, the basic one, but it looks really nice. But that blue is a similar blue to this one, but it's a transparent shell, so it looks a little bit different. Looks like there will be a digital version, too, if you want to buy a ROM for an emulator. So yeah, I've, I'm backing the game the game on Kickstarter. They sent me this preview copy, which is super awesome. Um, but I'm backing the game as well because I want to support them, and um, I'm, I'm getting the ROM version because I want to be able to load it on my EverDrive, which I just got a new EverDrive, the N8 Pro. And... Um, and I also like kicked in extra money because the, the ROM's only like 10 bucks, but I want to support them a little bit more than that. I thought this was a game that's a prequel to Bloodsport. <laughs> that's funny. Is that That's a Van Damme movie, right? I remember being very confused as a kid. It was late at night one, one um, evening where I was flipping channels and I was looking in the TV guide, and they had listed a movie called Masters of the Universe 2. And I was like, what? What is this? Because it was not He-Man. It wasn't a He-Man movie. 
Um, I believe it was a Van Damme film, and I want to say it was Bloodsport or Cyborg or something like that. But I was very, very confused, like, why they called it Masters of the Universe 2. It has nothing to do with He-Man. Such a weird, like, way to brand it, especially when, as far as I know, Masters of the Universe did not do well. Those birds kind of look like the bird in Bird Week, if you've ever played that game on Famicom. That is a tough game. That is a weird, tough game. Um... Yeah, I'm not doing so hot here. I don't know why I'm hitting my controller button so freaking hard. I'm sure you can hear that very loudly, and I don't need it to be. Okay, I need to go over here. I need a duck. Oh, shoot. Okay, that didn't work the way it worked. It worked differently before when I played against him. Okay, the big, the big boss man. Okay. Uh, this house says Chumley, so I thought Changli is the closest. Yeah. Hey, Alpha Nerd. Welcome. How are you doing? Bloodsport is a movie that became Mortal Kombat. Interesting. Universal Soldier? I think it was Cyborg something. I want to say it was Cyborg something. Soldier of the Future. I don't know. I'm making that up now. Now I'm making up new 80s movies. Alright, let me just get to the end here and... Pretty sure I thought that the, the unless I'm unless it changes, I thought the pattern was jump over the two, the first two, and then you can duck under the last one. But maybe I was standing too close to him. So it's like it's a nerd, an old lady, and a kid. So Pawn Stars. So I watched a full episode. Last night's was the first full episode I've seen of Pawn Stars, and again I thought I liked it. But uh, the whole time I was like, why aren't anybody, why isn't anybody wearing a mask? Like, when did they film this? Um, I guess it must be an older episode, or they just eschewed the masks? Alright, here we go. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, I need to, oh, maybe I need to get out of the way. Go like that. Okay, that didn't work. Ugh. Alright, I gotta do that again. I thought I had a good um, pattern for that guy. Dolph Lundgren, Lundgren? I think it was... I want to say it was Van Damme. I don't think Dolph Lund Lundgren was in it. it. Made it even weirder. Like, if it was the same actor, I could see that being tied to Masters of the Universe, but... They didn't even have that weird troll guy in it from the first movie. It didn't... I don't know. I mean, I didn't watch it, either. Like, I just... I might have turned it on and watched a few minutes of it, but I think it was pretty evident that it had nothing to do with He-Man. So... Did anybody watch this He-Man and Cheer Christmas special this uh, holiday season? That's a classic. What was it about the 80s where they used to take, like, barbarian-type characters and bring them to Earth for some reason? It was very common. Um, like, they did it with... Okay. They did it with He-Man. Uh, they did it with um, Beastmaster. Ugh. Ah, okay, that boss is, is destroying me. Filmed in May. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren was in Master of the Universe, but I don't think he was in Master of the Universe 2. Alright, I don't know why that boss is giving me such... Well, I guess maybe... I, I beat him before, though, so... I think I just have to get that timing down again. I might have beaten him with, like, one life before, and then, and then didn't spend much time on the next stage. That's okay. It doesn't take very long to get back up here. And I don't even have to show the whole game. It'd be cool to do a full loop, because I'm curious about, about what it's like. Um, but um, this is not going to be a very long stream tonight. I still have to get my, my son to bed. Um, oh, like I was saying, so he beat Luigi's Mansion 3. He just got it for Christmas, and he was upstairs playing it, and he wanted my help. And I'm like, I can't help you. I'm about to start streaming. And then he wanted to watch me stream, and... You know, I was like, that's fine as long as, you know, you're quiet. Sometimes he'll participate in a stream with me, and that's that's great. But, um, he just seemed like he was going to be kind of annoying, so I sent him downstairs to watch uh, watch TV for, for now. So hopefully he won't come up and interrupt. If he does, it's fine, but, uh... 
that may also be the, uh, the limiting factor on how long I stream. I do want to get him to bed. His bedtimes have, have gone gone um, later and later because he's off school right now. And bedtime is honestly a bit of a chore with him sometimes. Rick is hard. <laughs> Doing laundry, kids' bath time, dishes. Yep. Yeah, so we were talking about this, Mazin. There's a movie that is, is touted as Masters of the Universe 2, but... Um, but it is it has nothing to do with He-Man. So it's purely a weird branding thing, which I also think was not the branding that the film had in theaters. Assuming that it was in theaters, it was only something that they did on like, not even home video, maybe just for TV broadcast. Um, I haven't you know, done a deep dive on it, like any extensive research at all, but it's, it's gotta be it's kind of a fascinating, maybe not that fascinating, but sort of interesting story to it. So Game Beaters, I'm not sure. I, I'm assuming that there are four levels that I think they are going to repeat because there's a, a, a counter for Pinky. And I assume that the levels repeat in Kung Fu as well, but I've never gotten through all four stages in Kung Fu. Um, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I'm assuming the game will loop. I don't know if it gets harder or not. Um, but I think the goal is to just get the highest score. And, um, whoops. And I don't usually care about that too much. Like, I played, um, well, I guess unless I'm in a contest or something. So, uh, but if the game gets harder, you know, it'd be interesting. Whoops. stupid hits here. I also really um, dig the music in this. But you know, how cool is it to have... Oh, come on. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not focused here. How cool is it to have a game like based on you, right? And this isn't... Uh, you know, I've seen ROM hacks of games where, where you can put you know, I've seen John do like ROM hacks of John Riggs do ROM hacks of games where he puts um, somebody into another game, but to have a whole game, you know, based around you, like Jane Silent Bob, that's a cool um, license thing to have. Um, you know, and there's like a rich history of uh, well, that'll probably go in my review, but there, there's like a rich history of, of games based on reality shows and reality show characters, at least in Japan, like Takashi's Challenge. Um, or even looking at like Game Center CX, um, you know, it's a neat, it's a neat thing that this is kind of um, harkening back to, you know, because we didn't get a lot of those on the NES. I guess we have like Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen games on the Game Boy um, and things like that, but on the actual NES, were there a lot of games like this? There were movies, movie tie-ins, and TV show tie-ins. But nothing like built around, you know, a celebrity, or not many built around a celebrity. I guess you have like Jackie Chan's action kung fu. Even that was sort of based on like a movie, right? Which I guess kung fu was. I mean, that was Spartan X. It all comes back to kung fu. Alright, that's not so bad. I wonder if that will be a trend new NES games based on franchises. You know, um, I don't know. I guess two. Two games in pretty short succession kind of suggests a trend, right? Um, one is kind of a fluke. Two is two is odd. Um, could be a trend, and and I guess it sort of makes sense because like who has the money, I guess, to commission a game? Uh, these things take a huge amount of time and effort to make, and a very particular sort of unique um, expertise these days so you know and there's stuff people are hiring people people are hiring uh, folks to do to do games like um, I was awakening uh, they hired Brad Smith right Brad Smith is doing that that's awesome like I think he's gonna do a fantastic job on, on that one I mean I thought that um, um, Infinite NES Lives was doing a really good job on it too, but sometimes, um, you know, life gets in the way. So people being commissioned to do ports of things um, is really cool. And there's been, I guess, Limited Run Games did GALF, right? They commissioned uh, GALF. Um, 
So there's people are being hired to make homebrew games. It would be interesting. You know what would be cool is if Lin Manuel Miranda wanted a video game based on like Hamilton or something like that, because he is a huge Nintendo fan. Okay, I need to get out of the way. Ugh, I need to stand on that thing. Okay, let me figure this out. Okay. Okay, I, I think I get it. I think I have to know where I'm supposed to stand there. Yeah, and it's fun. Like, it's very um, easy to play. It's very... And, and easy to play is different from it being easy, because clearly I'm having some trouble here. Um, it's got that... It's got that addictive factor to it. I mean, part of it's also like I'm streaming, so I want to keep playing it, but... Um, Yeah, so you've seen the sprite flickering there, because there's a lot of characters on the screen now. Flickering, that's what uh, that's the word I was looking for before. The I know NES games. Um I have trouble getting the timing down on those kicks, which is why I mostly do those punches. Um and I don't do a huge number of these jumping kicks, but I guess I could use that to like dispatch a bird or something, right? much health to get in here. I need to get I need to get to him at the end with um, more health. Ugh, okay, so duck here. Okay. See he has no range. No range at all. Ugh, alright. <laughs> this is as far as I've gotten today. I've definitely gotten past him though. Um, we'll 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 get it. Yeah. We'll see. I may not even get to the end of this game. I have no idea what the boss on stage four is like. Yeah, I'm going to try to get the timing down on these things better. It's just that the range is so short that I don't trust it, but the hit boxes make sense. Like they seem, they seem pretty good. It's just you don't have a lot of range. You have to get like right up in their face in order to do these. Okay. See, I hit him on the way over. The, um, I was going to say that the sprite work in this reminded me a lot of, um, like, Leisure Suit Larry, actually, like the old Sierra games, which makes sense, because um, Kevin did it, but I guess Pika Bruce did the graphics. Um, so it's, like, very simple, but I like that. I like that style. The Adventures of Flow Down and Flicker. <laughs> uh, yeah, Avis does have an extra sprites option. I don't tend to use it, um, just because I like... It's part of the NES, like it's part of the uh, it's part of the the way it's supposed to look. Um, I guess I should kill those guys to get like the points. There's also more annoying um, enemies in in Kung Fu, and I don't know if they're gonna have things like that here. Like some of the some of the enemies in Kung Fu are really really annoying. This also has sort of like a, the, a bit of the color palette of, I want to say, like any escape. Like I think that Pika Bruise is, de is is developing a um, like an aesthetic that you can recognize, you know, and the stuff in the background, like the the shelves, look like stuff I would see in like any escape. I really like it. I'm very impressed with um, with pixel art. That actually is an NES back there. Hold on a second, I just noticed that. That is an NES back there on the left. There's like a Rob and those are a bunch of carts. So I just wasn't observant before. That's really cool. Yeah, that whole shelf, like that's the Rob and like a, it looks like a black box game there and a bunch of NES cartridges. And the NES and a controller. That's cool. I didn't notice that before. Very nice, nicely done. I'm talking to uh, to Pikachu's, not to me. Yeah, no, those are neat. I like them. 
I didn't I didn't pick up on that before. All right, Pinky, we're gonna f find you soon. All right. <clears throat> I was kind of hoping that the floors would look more different um, from each other. Yikes. But I don't think they change much in Kung Fu either. You know, there's a katana back there. Wish I could take the katana to my, to my boss fight. This store probably has more NES games than most, uh, most um, retro game stores at this point. Look at all the shells. I don't think there's any way to gain like more lives. I don't know if you get more lives when you hit a certain number of points. Like, there's so many mysteries. But uh, they didn't say anything about that in the manual, I don't think. So, oh no, I missed the thing. Being chased by an old lady. Okay. Ugh. Oops. No. Really bad at, at judging that. I guess I can just get out of the way, but I don't think you can dodge that. I think I just have to be the right distance away from him to do it. I'm having just trouble implementing it for some reason. So. But yeah, getting getting some value out of this. Don't want the game to be too easy, right? Yeah, I just got my copy of uh, Trophy, the, the finished version of the game, and I really wanted to play that today, too. I just don't have... I have I had work earlier, and I have I have a writing deadline that I need to hit that I'm getting a little bit anxious about, so I need to focus on that. I think I'm standing too far away from him. I think if I stand... Too, no, shoot. Okay. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's going okay, Jim. I'm having trouble with uh, Rick, this uh, third boss. I've got past him once um, when I first played this the other day, but I cannot get the timing down today for some reason. Wonder how they came to the conclusion Pawn Stars would make a good hack. This isn't a hack. Um, this is a uh, homebrew designed from the ground up, as far as I know. Um, yeah, so it wasn't, so it wasn't, uh, they didn't decide to do a Pawn Stars, um, game. Was, I think, I have, don't know how it came about, but I, I'm pretty sure Chum Lee approached, uh, Kevin and hired him to make the game, and they talked about it with him and, and probably with the, the folks at the store about what kind of game they wanted to make, and I think they decided on a Kung Fu-like game, and, uh, and that's what this is. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Jane Silent Bob is kind of a River City Ransom game, right? Okay, come on. Oh, Why am I having trouble with this? Okay, there we go. That's my sweet spot. You have to stand, like, exactly there. Try to remember where that is. Kind of right, right under the frame of that, of that window. That shelf. But yeah, I mean, this isn't, uh, I don't think this is using any, like, assets or anything from, from, uh, or even the programming or anything from Kung Fu, it's, it's from scratch. So this stage gets a little bit trickier. I was only here once, and again, because there's no continue, so I know there's more hazards here, like, there's, so I'm trying to be careful, but I'm also, like, trying not to be too slow, because... I think the, uh, oh, I know how to, I think I got up to the boss here, and I, th oh, the boss is tricky on this one, now I remember this, and I sort of could figure out what I need to do, but I don't know how I'm going to figure out how to do it. It's kind of an interesting puzzle at the end of the stage. The fight is, is a kind of a puzzle, and, and on top of that you have a limited timer, so I may not, I may not beat this because I'm not sure how to, how to fight that guy at the end here. But we're almost there, and then you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's like a mirror version of you, and you can control 
you can kind of control him if you're doing oh shoot. If you're do if you hold down, he'll move around because you can kind of do the diagonal attacks. Okay, so I need to kind of keep him moving. Oh, he went the wrong way. Shoot. Okay, that's fine. Ugh, what am I doing? Okay. Yeah, and so doing this within the timer? Gotta get him over there, I think. Okay, and I, this is gonna take too long, right? Can I get him close to me so I can just punch him? Oh, but he'll punch me too. Oof. Oof, right, and if you jump... This isn't working. Nope. I'm not quite sure what to do there, because it's going to take too long to kill him that way. Um, having trouble with crashing the boys on the NT Mini Noir works fine on the top loader, but weird graphics glitches on the analog. That's interesting. Is it the physical cart, like the actual cartridge, or is it a running on your EverDrive? And I guess it works. Do you have an AVS? Does it work on that? You don't have an AVS. I can test it if it's the ROM. Um, graphic glitches on the analog. All right, I gotta get back up to this guy. Um, interesting. I don't know what's going on there, but they'll have to patch it, I guess. They, um, I saw they did a, a new firmware. They did a firmware update that fixed some issues, but uh, it's very interesting how these issues come up with certain games because it should be I mean, they certainly advertise it as a perfect kind of replica of how the NES works, like a replication of how the NES works. So you shouldn't have odd behavior, little differences like that. Um, you know, just like the AVS has is having some kind of issue with uh, with um, Jan Silent Bob. Um, but you know, they usually can patch them out. But uh, you just wonder, like, how many games have issues because you know, not everyone has all the games. Like, actually, I should test it on my, test this with the new firmware. On my AVS, I cannot run the Muppet Adventure NES game. Um, it gets a weird, um, it just freezes after, you know, early into the, into the game, which isn't a big loss, of course, um, but it's just a weird thing. It worked fine on my EverDrive, but it was the physical cartridge that was having an issue, so I don't know if there's like a physical problem with it. The ROM works fine, but the physical card is problematic. Okay, so so here's the thing with, with the physical cart gem. Does the cartridge have like one of those green stripes, or is there like a stripe at the bottom of the, of the cartridge where the pins are uh, on the very edge? Because I'm wondering if it's having issues co connecting to the pins. And that's, I think, a problem that happens with the AVS. It happened more with the Green Stripe games on the on the original um, AVS, but then Brian um, fixed the cartridge slot, and and um, all the newer models had the correct one, and there was an, you know you were able to to get a free replacement and, and swap it in. Um, but I think some games are still having problems on the AVS, like that Muppet Adventure game, probably. So if the physical nature of that cartridge is different from like a standard NES cartridge, then I wonder if that's the issue. Because it sounds like the, the pins on the um, the analog are actually really finicky. Like, if the games aren't perfectly clean, it gives you issues. And then, of course, like, if the games aren't perfectly clean and then you move the cartridge in the slot, then it gives you issues. So, whoa, he just zipped over there. Whoops. Thank goodness he isn't trying to run me over. So I'm not quite sure what to do on that last boss. He mirrors your movements, but he does like the opposite of what you're doing. So you can duck and stay in place and then kind of move diagonally to get him to move across the screen as, while jumping, but I'm not sure how to position him under the falling blades quickly enough. I mean, I guess you just have to get up to him with like a lot of time. So is your goal to slack off at work? Kind of, yeah. Hey, Chris James. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun. I'm having some trouble with uh, some of the bosses, the later bosses, but uh, but it's a good it's a good time so far. What time is it now? It's almost 9. Okay. I'll probably go to like 9.30 or so. 
Um, and then I'll get my kid to bed. If, if he'll if he'll if he'll go to bed. If he'll cooperate with me, and then I'll have a late night writing probably. Try to wake up early this morning. I couldn't do it. I was I was up late. Um, yesterday spent all my free time messing around with my new EverDrive, experimenting with uh, different games. I'm debating if I want to sell the old EverDrive or just hold on to it. I have a hard time letting go of NES stuff, obviously. Um, I know I could probably get a good chunk of the money back from from my purchase of the N8 Pro, but, uh, oh, I got the bird. I need to stand, wait, I need to stand here. Oh, right, okay, I think this is, I did find this the other, last time, there's like this dead spot, or safe spot, like right there, where you can hit him and he can't hit you, even though he's passing his shots through you. So that's how I got past him last time. Pretend you didn't see that if you're playing this for the first time, sorry about that. If I shift the cart, I did not read the word shift. If I shift the cart in the slot left or right, the graphics issues appear in different places. Yeah, there's got to be some physical issue going on there. Hey, did I? How are you? Welcome, welcome. I was just telling Sean... Uh oh There we go. I was just telling Sean that I've been listening to uh, your episode of um, Assembly Line, and I've been enjoying hearing your voice and Sean's voice, in addition to Kevin and Bo's. Hey, I don't give a thumb. Welcome. Yeah, this is fun. So I finally figured out how to get past that... Um, get past Rick. Um, consistent. Oops, shoot. Consistently. And then I have to figure out how to get past this boss... This is the last stage and the last boss coming up, and it's very tricky. I'm trying to figure out, I gotta just remember which of these blades comes falling down on me. I could probably count them if I, next time I come through here, because they stop like just before you get to them. I should probably count them next time or something. Look for some visual cue. So. Give me a second here, because I'm going to get up to the boss. All right. Let me pause it there for a second here. So I don't know if you've played this one. Uh, are familiar Northeast accents? <laughs> yes, you, you, my brethren. <laughs> Do I have a Northeast accent? I, I never know for sure if I have an accent or not. Um, I grew up in Yonkers, so I'm just glad I don't have a Yonkers accent. But maybe that's it. Maybe it was your accent just felt... It felt like home. Um, so this boss here, you're fighting a purple version of you, of Chumley, um, or he's like your mirror, you know, your opposite, and um, he'll do everything the opposite of what you do. You can manipulate him if you like stay in one place and duck, because then you don't move, but you can make him jump around. And I think you need to maneuver him so that he gets under those blades. But the problem is, I don't think I have enough time. I don't think I have enough time. I'm gonna see how to do this. So I'm gonna move him over here. I missed that one, but I just need to move him faster, I think. So typically one of these two blades is going to move. I moved him the wrong way. See if I can get get him to, to die with these. It's gonna be one of these two, right? Gotta reverse it in my head. Okay, this might work. This might work. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a pattern there or not. Is it going to be this one now? Yep. And is it going to do this one twice? Maybe? I don't know if it's random or if it's just going to repeat. Okay, it's going to do this one now. Ah, and we got him. Okay, we finished, we finished a loop. I finished the game. Let's see what happens at the end here and then what happens when the game loops around. See, he's kind of got a little glitch going on there. I don't know what's happening there. Now, this game is finished, I believe, but I don't know if there's like if, if they find bugs or something, if they can if they can fix anything before. Oh, that's cool. I like that that animation there. Pinky, I am here. This is so much better than working. <laughs> so, but how did he find him? He was in the store the whole time. Was he being? Was the dog? The dog was outside. And he was in the store looking for the dog that was outside somewhere. But he left the store now. He had to fight to leave the store to go look for his dog. I think. 
But I like the, uh, the scrolling there. There's like little fountains back there. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, thanks, Jim. PCB on Crash is thinner than normal. That could be. The PCBs do vary in, 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 um, in their th thickness, I guess. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so I hit start. All right, so it's looping now. Let's see if anything is different here. Or is it just the same same as before? The speed is about the same, and there don't seem to be any additional enemies. So I think... I think it's just going to play through the same. So the challenge, I guess, is to just get through as many loops as you can. But it's not like it got harder this time through. Like there aren't any birds or anything in here. We're falling, um, falling blades. The old ladies did not turn into beetles. Same boss. And I don't think the damage that you take is any different either. Which is fine. I was kind of expecting it to get harder in the second loop, but I just know that's a thing that, that games often will do. It doesn't look like this one does it. So, whoops. Um, so I guess you just have to collect more pinkies. Two chums, one pinky, yeah. But you didn't even get any more lives for that, I don't think. You know. Was that actually a no- Did I die at all that first go? Was that a, was that a no death run? I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Um... But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's very fun. There's copyright issues would be hilarious if old ladies became buzzy beetles, right? For sure. I was expecting at least a moderate, like, speed increase or something. Um, which I don't think happened. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a challenge for most most players, but I, I do think it is a fun game. It would be fun to see how high your score can get. Like I don't even know. It looks like the the, the highest score you could probably get on this is nine 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 nine, right? Can you get to a kill screen? That would be interesting. But I you know I definitely had an easier time of this than I did with uh, Kung Fu. <laughs> but this kind of makes me want to go back and play more Kung Fu and see if I can, you know, actually actually beat it. I actually don't know if Kung Fu has like a second loop if, or if it's just done now that I think about it. I was just assuming because there's that counter. Because there's a princess counter, I think, on, the, on Kung Fu as well. So I think it just loops around, but it's not like Ghosts and Goblins. Um, which uh, I've been watching Solid Nate has been trying to do a, a Ghosts and Goblins, like trying to do as many loops of Ghosts and Goblins as you can, because every time you beat that game, it gets a little bit faster. And uh, he's using save states on his NES Classic to kind of, you know, uh, cheese his way through it. I don't even think it's, he's just like, sp um, uh, you know, spamming the save states. And um, he got up to like loop 18, I think, the other night, and it's it's absurd how fast the character, the enemy sprites are moving. And his progress is so incremental because he has to just kind of advance a little bit and then, you know, s s uh, make a save state as soon as he makes any progress. And then as soon as he dies, he has to go back. Like, it would be so much easier, I guess, if he was doing, if he was playing it on like, well, it's too late now and there might be some additional lag or something, but if he'd been playing it on the, uh, the Switch, he could just do, wait, does the Switch have rewind? I don't think it has rewind on an NES game. So if he had something that was do, that could do rewind, um, that would probably be an easier experience in this, these uh, save states. But he's got like he's juggling like four different save states. And I was joking like it's like save states the video game because it's just all about making save states and, and managing them all. Well, let me pause for a second here. Either speed increase or revised enemy sets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, you're just talking about that, Jim. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, Switch has NES Rewind? Okay. I wasn't sure if they... Did they add that at some point, or did it have it at the beginning? Because I know that was something that they only had on the Super NES Classic, and I think the Super NES 
classic games on the Switch have them as well. I didn't really use rewind when I, I've played a couple games on the on the Switch um, just because of the save states were just easier to save my progress, like Blaster Master and um, Zelda 2 I played on there. So I'm gonna stand here. Yeah, there's a little a little way to cheese this guy. Just punch him in the crotch. Very effective. Crotch punch is very effective. Okay, yeah, and an SNES was added. So cool, you know. Um, but yeah, it would probably be easier, with, like rewind, I would think. But I don't know how much farther he can take take his runs on there. Poor Rick. <laughs> Poor Rick was punched in the. <laughs> how is N64 rewind? Uh, there is no N64 uh, games on there. Oops, I forgot about that. The very fans are attacking you. I wonder if Pawn Stars fans are um, particularly uh, dangerous. It's very interesting watching Pawn Stars like a full episode because the 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 bizarre and interesting things that come into the store, and then sort of like the just like the the structure of the show, how they always kind of turn into it like a mini history lesson, like kind of lecturing to the person who either may or may not actually know the history of the item that they've brought in. Some folks who bring stuff in, like clearly they know what it is. Um, and there's like one guy in last night's episode who I'm pretty sure knew that he was bringing in like a forgery. Um, not a forgery, it was like a, um, it was a uh, photocopy of something. Whoops, that got me, okay. So, move him back over here. I assume this is how you're supposed to beat this. There could be some other strategy. I don't know for sure. Like, there might be a way to hit him while standing next to him in some way. But this seems like the easiest way to do it. Well, if the first one was in a no-death run, then this certainly will be. If I can get him before the time runs out. Good old no death run homebrew games. Yay! Alright, second loop. N64. No, I knew you were joking. I just figured I played straight. Blaster Master without passwords or battery save. That is that is crazy. Yeah, I mean I did it with uh, save states just to save my progress. And I'll admit I did do a save state at the last boss just because I didn't want to have to repeat the game. Um, but once you get there, like, you know you're going to be able to do it. It's just, you know, do you want the cred of, of doing it all in one sitting or not? Yeah, they should have the N64 emulation on the Switch. People have got to be ballsy with stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, right? Limited continues. Yeah, Last of Master is a rough game. Um, but I'm happy to have finished it, and I'm, I'm actually waiting for my my uh, Blaster Master Zero games to come from Limited Run. I know some people have started getting them already, but I ordered the um, special edition for just the end, for the first game just because it looked like an NES box art. And uh, and I wanted that. So, all right, we've got two pinkies. For a brief period of time, I may have the world's highest score in, um, in Chumley's adventure. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pop uh, Kung Fu in again soon just to kind of see again how different it is. I should be recording. I have to re I have to play through this again and record footage because I don't want to use the footage from the stream. And I'll record some footage of Kung Fu as well when I play it. But this game is so fun, it makes me want to play Kung Fu again. Because this is like kind of a uh, an idealized version of Kung Fu, I think. It's, uh, it's Kung Fu without the the challenge <laughs> if that makes sense like kung fu is just like a very for me i played it it was very punishing i don't know if anybody here has, has beaten that one maybe maybe jim you've beaten kung fu properly um in which case let me know so i can praise you because that is a tough game could get a speed run on this. Oof, that was a pretty uh, dramatic death. How are the two Blaster Master games for the Switch? So I don't know. I, I've, I think I might have played a little bit of the demo, um, but I haven't really played them through. I, as far as I know, the, f the first one at least is like the first game, the first NES, like the NES game with 
quality of life improvements and just like slightly updated graphics and some new areas and and bosses um so i feel like that's going to be a fun thing to play because i really like blaster master but it's too hard to play um it's just a very frustrating game so i I beat the game using the save states on the switch um using that save state at the end and i was like okay i'm gonna try to play this through in one sitting the way god intended it you know to get the street cred for it and i was playing it i was recording it and i got about half an hour and a half into the game at the point where i had to backtrack a heck of a long way through a really dangerous spot i think it might have been like one of the ice areas with you know it's just very dead deadly and i realized i wasn't having fun i wasn't having fun with it it was just a chore to do it and so i was just like i'm just i'm just done with this game i think you know i'm glad that i played it um but i don't see myself playing it again anytime soon blossom zero probably i will the only strike against blaster is no way to save progression yeah and the japanese version i think is it worse do they have fewer continues or maybe they have more continues but some of the areas are harder like there's like one section i saw where there's like a, a suicide leap um they have to land on a on a ladder or something to exit and they changed it for the nes game but um anyway need to grab kung fu sometime it's probably not expensive i don't think hi jay yeah this is chum lee from pawn stars yeah, so we... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. So, uh, so we finished the game, uh, finally, first time, and now we're on our third loop of it. So I guess the point is to get a high score in the game. And uh, I think I've got a good, pretty good rhythm going here. Um, found a couple of ways to, to cheese the bosses which is all part of the fun in, in an NES game, of course. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't mind if, if the game had increasing difficulty um, to make the, the loops more challenging, but uh, some of it is also just a matter of, like, how long, how long can you sustain it, right? But, you know, I saw Paul uh, Mega Retro Man Tessie um, play... Uh, whatchamacallit, um, Balloon Fight, you know, the the NES port of Balloon Fight, and that game just loops, it just loops endlessly, um, and he looped the game like 20 or 30 times, and it took some time, I think he'd been playing it for like 4 hours, and he got, definitely, definitely got the world record, the score looped around, the score looped around and the level, the stage counters looped around, but the game just get hard, kept getting um, harder and he just kept going and four hours in, he looked miserable because he wanted to stop playing, but he couldn't make himself like turn off the game or die intentionally to end the game. So he just kept going, playing it the way he was supposed to until he finally did like legitimately stop. But it was like a weird circle of hell where like you're here it is like you're so good at a game you can you you keep playing the game but you can never stop playing that game um he definitely got a world record and i think that the world record maybe didn't count because he didn't show his his hardware or something at the beginning of the stream or some weird rule for it but he definitely has a world record in, in balloon fight and it was pretty pretty amazing to see so yeah i guess the challenge is how many times can you beat can you beat uh, Chun Li's adventure uh, before you or the game before the game ends or you end? Um, I don't know. I've got like a high score now. I don't. I should put this up on the uh, the homebrew boards on video games sa Sage. Um, it might be a good challenge for the next uh, homebrew players challenge. Maybe if folks uh, if folks pick up the game. I guess this won't be available for free, but. Uh, people own the cartridge or the ROM or something, then it might be a good challenge. I know how hard it is to, um, I'm not close enough. I know how hard it is to pick a game that, that is universally available. Yeah, just spam that guy. Uh, I only played Blaster Master Zero 1 and it's great. Yeah, and Blaster Master Zero 2 just seems like the same game, but more stuff, like new levels and new powers and stuff, so I'm definitely gonna enjoy playing that. They have a reference to that jump of Blaster Master Zero? That's cool. 
That's how I felt with the end of Project Blue. I didn't want to shut it off to lose progress, but it was almost hating playing it with all the fails. So I'm going to play that in the new year, like once I'm past my deadline. I've, I've, I'm definitely thinking more about being on a homebrew kick. Um, so I'm going to do uh, Battle Kid 2, of course. But uh, there are some homebrew games that have piled up that I want to play through. Uh, like I want to finish Bass Def Adventures. And, um, and I want to play through Project Blue and finish Lizard. So I want to play a bunch of games, and some of them I'll stream and some of them I might not, but I'll probably play and stream uh, Project Blue. And we'll see how I do at the end there, Jim. But, uh, I've, I've, and I've, I've got to play through a uh, Mall Brawl. I think I can stream that one, because I have a new capture card. Um, I have a new capture card set up on my CRT, so I'm going to play it on the NES. Unless the AVS somehow starts supporting uh, the game before then, I will uh, I will just play it on um, on original hardware. I mean, at this point, I feel like I could just play this game forever and uh, maybe not die, but we'll see. Yeah, that seems totally random how those how those bleeds move. Uh, looks fire. Hey, Joe. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I'm enjoying it. Going to be putting together the list for the next homebrew competition, but we try to limit it to free games. Yeah, no, I figured it's it's challenging, but. You now have access to Action 53, like four volumes of Action 53. So among all of those, you should have no problem finding games. <laughs> the 100 loop challenge. I'm just going to play to like 930, I think, and call it. Um, and and the cool thing, like I got the AVS, I mean, I got the retro, the, the, the EverDrive N8 Pro. So now I can run the, the proper uh, full cartridges for those things and I'm still waiting for the physical um, releases as well because I'm gonna pick that up um, yeah we got three chump we got three pinkies um, so yeah there should be a ton of games in there like you should make chicken of the of this is not chicken of the sea chicken of the farm one of them I need to play through more of those games um, chicken of the farm is a fun like, weird little game and then there's that one, uh, which what is it called? The one, it's like the one where you're just, it's in like an endless, endless, uh, endless thing where you're shooting zombies and they're like randomly generated. That was a cool one. So you've got like nest dev games and you've got the uh, action, you know, action 53 stuff. There should be plenty of games we can choose from now. Do you got? Do you have any idea like when that cha that that challenge is going to start? Did I? I forget when we started the last one. I guess it must be in the spring. But, uh, I'm not sure if you knew this, but to face the final boss in Lizard, you have to play the whole game in one sitting. Wait, what? What? Are you serious, Jim? I did not know that. I have only just started plumbing the depths of that game. I, I have a password. I got through one of the... I got like one of the things. I, I just the game is is both fascinating and baffling to me, and uh, and I really want to p take the time to just really really sink myself into it. And I think I need to map it out. I found maps online um, that other folks have already made, and I know there's a map like in the game, but I think I need to map it. And what's throwing me off in the game is there's. Um, there's like platforms, there's areas where if you fall, like you just kind of keep falling endlessly because it just loops around like vertically. Um, it's a really cool game, but it's I definitely need to be, I think, in the right mood to play it and have a lot of free time to do it. But I did not know that about the boss. That's very interesting and, and somewhat, somewhat frustrating. So the bosses don't remain, so with the passwords, so then what's the password get you then? Like, huh, okay. And I know there's like secrets in the game. I think that's a game that has like secret passwords and, and, and things like that. And uh, I need to, uh, I want to play it. I want to understand more of that game, but it's, it's very, it's very cryptic. But it's really cool. Like it's, I like the aesthetic of it very much. 
Ugh, what am I doing? See, I might die here because I'm being stupid. Gotta post my high score at the end of this. I'm sure Kevin or somebody has like a high score in this game. Bloodfall. Oh, Bloodfall! Thank you, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we're at the very beginning of planning. Last one started in January, but we are not ready to do the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, that starting later would be perfect for me because I'm, I'm finishing up a project. And, um, not that you should, you know, shape it around my needs, but, uh, you know, take the time that you need. You guys also need a break. That was, that was a heck of an effort to manage. And if you need some help or something, I might, I might be able to help you out. Um, if there's anything that, uh, volunteers can do <clears throat> to help maintain it. But I really enjoy those challenges. They get me to play uh, homebrew games that I don't otherwise um, spend a lot of time on. Um, and uh, the only drawback for them, for me, is that sometimes like they they vie with against all the other games that I want to play. You know, I want to, and so I want to participate. But then, you know, the limited gaming time that I have, do I spend a lot of it practicing, or and it really depends on the type of game it is. You know, like when I was playing um, Cowlitz. You know, I play Callous Adventure, you know, all day long. So that was fun. Um, I guess, well, Micromages isn't free, so we can't do Micromages, but... Uh, it would be interesting if, uh, well, I don't know, if it's like a $10 ROM, I don't feel like that's like too much to ask somebody to, to pay, you know, to buy a game. Um, or maybe they could make a demo version or something that, you know, just for the contest. I don't think I'm supposed to be able to do that. I might be wrong. I mean, that happens. I found a, I found like a mostly safe spot in Blaster Master above the frog too. Like the safe spots are safe spots, but it makes it a little bit easy there. Uh, that was your issue with the laser too. I reached out to Brad Smith to ask once by public came off as too aggressive or critical. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think Brad is really warmed to me. Um, not that we need to be best buds or anything, but uh, I see him. I see him streaming. I join his streams, and, and he follows some folks that I follow. And uh, I don't know. He's re he's really cool, though. I'm very impressed with his uh, his games and his skill. His hacks are really cool. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I want to be friends with him, but I don't really know him very well. He hung out in my stream, though. That was cool. He came by when I was playing Lizard on my birthday, and he came by, and that was neat. Um, but I also don't want to be spoiled for Lizard, so it's it's tricky. I mean, I guess now I know about the boss. That's fine. I don't. That's not really a spoiler, but I don't want somebody to tell me like where to go to find something or anything like that, you know. So, whoops, go this way. Um... I really am curious to see how other people play this game. I'm also very curious as to whether whether Chum Lee has beaten this game. I assume he has. But I wonder if I mean everybody has like a different play style. Um, I'm sure there's like a, a another way to do this. Whoa. Uh oh. Oh, man, I thought something buggy happened there for a second because the things were still going. Uh, only fizzard, finish Lizard on easy mode. What does easy mode do? I should, uh, I should, maybe I'll try it that way. Need to download Kalitz. Yes, absolutely. There's um, Kalitz, uh, so there's Kalitz Second Adventure. I mean, they're all free now. Kalitz, um, the first one is free as well. And then there's the Lost Adventure, which I think is hosted on a different site. They're all really good. I love, I love the game. Definitely in top top NES games, top NES games period, and then top NES homebrew games. Help me out with an NES coding issue once. Cool. No, I mean I, I don't think he's I I just don't think that he's particularly interested in me. You know, <laughs> I guess what I'm saying, um, which is fine. Like I feel like I've 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 have a kind of a friendship or, you know. A, a closer acquaintance with other folks in the in the homebrew community. Um, I mean, I'm not 
I'm sort of an, I'm an outside. I don't homebrew. I don't program yet. Uh, that's on my list of things. <laughs> on my list of things is to do is learn 6502. Um, I've got Nerdy Knights on my computer. I've got this other guy that I found. Um, I mean, I have I have NES Maker to practice with, but I really want to learn 6502. Um, at least the, the fundamentals of it. So I want to mess around with it. I just haven't I haven't sat down to do it because I know it's going to take me a while, and I, I need to have a clear plate. And and lately it's like, oh, I have free time. I don't have any deadlines. I'm just going to play games when I have the time. <laughs> you know, it's like right now I'm doing a writing project, and it's been really hard for me to not not get to play games as much as I have been accustomed to. Ouch. Whoops. Okay. It's going to be a shame to turn this off when I just. Oof. Wow when I just ran out of time to play, because I could just keep going. Hi, Dizzy, 9v2. Yes, this is the new game from Kahan. Yet, yes, I do plan to play, I do plan to program at some point, Jim. It might be a retirement thing, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for games. Um, one simple arcade platformer game, and simple. Um, and uh, one more ambitious project that is also based on a, on a, on a book or story that is in the uh, public domain. So uh, there's stuff that I want to work on. Um, and actually, I've got three game ideas, but one is super ambitious, and I don't know that I'd ever be able to program that one. Um, the the, the pl arcade platformer, I think, could be pretty manageable because I'm envisioning it as sort of a Mario Brothers kind of style game. Um, but it's also a challenge because, like, I have a really cool idea for that, for that game. Yeah, but I don't really play those types of games that often. Because, like I said, even though I'm doing it right now, I don't usually tend to want to play um, high-score games. Um, so let me say this. I um, have looped this game, I guess, four times now, as far as I can tell, because we've got the little pinky counter there. And I'm still digging it. It's, it's not taking my full attention. But uh, there's something very sort of soothing about it, um, and there is like that that mounting, you know, how far can I take this? How high, how many loops can I do? How high can my score get? It's not going to last, but right now because Nintendo discontinued it, the 3DS line of titles is more affordable at the moment. I should thank you, John. I should look for some more of those because um, uh, I want to collect some more 3DS games. We bought an extra 2DS. Um, the new 2DS, to just because it was in the Nintendo stores, like a refurb unit, just to kind of have an, like, an extra one, sort of the archival console that we keep. But I have probably my 3DS library is the smallest library of, of any of the Nintendo consoles that I own at this point. Your ideas are too ambitious for your skill level. Uh, I mean, there's so many people who would help you, I think. Um, you know, I sort of think, obviously, I would probably have to collaborate with somebody at least at least in um, terms of like doing the the music and maybe even the pixel. Like I want to learn how to do the pixel art aspect of it too. Music is probably going to be beyond me because I have absolutely no musical talent whatsoever. And I actually don't know if I have any talent with like pixel art, but um, I, t I sort of have a visual arts degree. So you think I'd be able to do something with that. Um, I used to have, there's some, uh, when I was a kid, my friend and I, came up with game ideas um, and I even wrote to Capcom once with my ideas for a Darkwing Duck game that would have been better than the NES Darkwing Duck game um, because it would have it would have hewed more closely to the uh, to the um, to the show but uh, and so I have somewhere I think I still have it somewhere I have a rejection letter from Capcom where they just say we can't take people's ideas you know thanks for the offer good luck I have the Switch would replace the 3DS. Knew the Switch would replace the 3DS. I, I pretty much thought that was the case. It looked like Nintendo, at one point I saw something about some leaked documents about the Switch, where at some point they actually planned the Switch to have a 3D screen. Um, so uh, I think maybe they were really thinking about it being a 3D, oops, thinking about it being a 3DS uh, killer or replacement. 3DS is a cool console. I never really took to it, which is probably why I don't have as many 3D games. And I don't really use the 3D, because the 3DS that I have is one of the earlier models, and it doesn't have like the eye-tracking stuff, 
so 3D is actually not very good on it. But um, they did add some pretty cool titles on there, and I think I have like the major ones, like I have the Metroid one, and I have uh, the the Zelda um, a Link Between Worlds, which is, I haven't played them. I haven't played them. I haven't even finished like the the New Game Plus in Super Mario 3D Land yet. Um, even though I really like that game, I just don't play on that console very much. So I should I should play it more. But I definitely want to collect more of the games to just have have them while they're affordable. This will probably be the last loop, guys, so I should probably wrap up the stream and go put my son to bed and, and try to get some work done tonight. Work! Um, but, you know, I assume this is just going to be more of this, and I could keep the game going indefinitely. Um, I will take a picture of my screen and post my high score <coughs> for whatever that's worth. Sort of, I'm tempted to just keep going because I think, I do think it probably will top out at 999,900, and then I don't know what happens after that. So, do we have time to fit in another run? Maybe. I think I can manage with the pixel art. I'm no Franken graphics though, but who is? See, the nice thing about the the arcade pl platformer is you could just have like a black screen in the background and call it that. Hey, old ass retro gamer, how you doing? 2DS, 2DS XL, Switch, and Switch Lite are awesome. Yeah. eBay shopper. Yeah, you know, I'll do one more loop. I don't think my son's in any hurry to go to bed, and he's probably just going to fight me on it anyway for a little bit. So we'll, we'll just do another loop. Might as well. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the, the chat. Tomorrow night, I am streaming as normal. Um, I thought about... I thought about doing this for my Wednesday night NES Alpha Numeric stream instead, um, just because that's when most people expect to see me streaming. But I didn't want to mess up my schedule because if I skip a game, that shifts all of the games that I have lined up. And I really like um, ending on uh, so my 200th episode. My 200th NES Alpha Numeric stream is going to be uh, Star Trek 25th anniversary, which I'm excited to play. And I wanted to have a game I was very excited to play. For the last, uh, the last for the 200th uh, anniversary stream, so uh, I want to keep that lineup, and I think the one before that is like Star Soldier or something. I don't know which what game it is is uh, would otherwise end up on on the 200th one. So I don't want to mess up the thing by skipping something. And tomorrow night I am streaming uh, my one and only Wisdom Tree game, Spiritual Warfare which I picked up because uh, I've heard good things about it, actually. And specifically, I'd, I was kind of convinced by the um, Frame Savers uh, podcast, which is about speedrunning. Talked about spiritual warfare being sort of like an interesting uh, Zelda clone. And I really wanted to have at least one Wisdom Tree game in my collection, so I picked it up not too long ago. And uh, we're going to check that out. Plus, it's kind of nice to stream spiritual war warfare kind of in the Christmas holiday season, I guess. You know? Um, didn't Chum Lee die? Um, in the game? No? Love Star Trek 25th Old Last Retro? Yeah, I've been wanting to stream that one for a while, because I think that'll be a fun one to do all the way through at some point. So we'll see how we'll see how I do. I might, I might want to continue it at some point. I keep seeing it, getting emails about the Postal Service. No, Chum Lee is still alive and well and with us, thank goodness, um, because he brought this very fun game about... I just saw him on TV, like, last night. And actually, no, I saw him on TV on a video, like, 10 minutes before I started streaming because he posted a video um, to the Kickstarter backers thanking them for their support uh, because his game is now fully funded. So, yeah, if you like the game, if you like what you see, go ahead and support it. Uh, support the Kickstarter. The link is in the description of this video. You can also Google for it. And uh, they've hit their they've hit their goal, fifteen thousand dollars, which in less than twenty four hours, which is kind of incredible. Um, especially considering the number of homebrew games that are like kind of coming out these days. There's like it seems like every month there's a homebrew game on Kickstarter, which is a good problem to have. I can't buy all of them on physical. Um, you can support this for just ten dollars to get the ROM and play it in an emulator or play it on a flash cart. Um, my review will be forthcoming probably in January before the Kickstarter ends. Actually, I don't know when it ends. I should have put that in the description. Um, hopefully before it ends. Not that it matters because it's fully funded. But, 
you've also sort of gotten my review already. The old man from Pawn Stars, yes. I missed a point bonus. Yeah, I'm just... Totally blew it. Uh, so if you look at the... Um, in honor of, on the title screen, there's some nice... Um, there's some nice tributes to the, the Pawn Stars uh, who, who have departed our earthly plane. Um, it was some really nice pixel art there, so that's a nice little thing, and I decided not to show that, just because... Uh, be a cool thing for people to see on their cartridges for the first time. Um, I guess I can probably watch some of those reviews now that I've played the game and formed my own opinions of it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what other people's take on the game is, and I do want to see more people playing this. I have no idea how many of these cartridges are out there. I'm very honored that uh, I was offered a preview cartridge, and um, I've been doing my best to spread the word because I, I, I knew pretty pretty quickly that it was a, it was a fun game. And I really like uh, Kevin's work and supporting the community. So, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of wasting a cartridge on, on little old me. And I figure I should at least do my best to make it worth their while. And, um... And... I was going to say... I forget what I was going to say. Notice that on the title screen. Yes, yes, yeah, so very cool. So yeah, I want to. I'm, I'm curious to see if other people have different strategies for this, or if I'm, you know, if I just have like a, a weird approach to get through here. And maybe if they see something like that, that that Rick is easy to beat when you find that spot. You, they could probably fix that or change it. Not that it's broken necessarily. Um, you know, I know they changed some things in Trophy, and I don't know if they changed things in Trophy that uh, that me and the other reviewers called out. Um, and I was mostly fine with it. Some of some of the um, like it's it's fine. You know, there's nothing really really broken about it or anything like that. But there's always like things that you can tweak to make it like even better, right? And I did find a very easy way to cheese the end boss, um, the final form of the end boss on um, on Trophy, and I'm interested to see if they change that or not. Um, like I don't think it's bad that there's like an easy way to beat the boss because it's very challenging and you know finding safe spots is just part of part of these old games you know there's like a, a boss in, in uh, Journey to Silius that I can beat you know without, without touching him you know getting hit once thank goodness because that is a very difficult game See, I kind of want to just keep playing this, because um, I could go to the top score. I don't know how long that would take me, but uh, I should probably call it a night. I could leave my AVS on, I suppose. See, this is really interesting how this is um, choosing which, which fan to stop. I don't know if there's like some consistent way to do that. Looking forward to putting more time in the trophy. Yeah, yeah. What are you playing right now, Jim? What are you in the middle of? You should put down whatever it is and play trophy instead. Trophy shouldn't take too long to, to play. I think I, I think I got through it the first time I got through it in about four hours. And then about half that time the second time through. But it's it, it is like this, like it's a fun game that just it feels very satisfying to play. And like I think like I think you said, it feels old. I mean it feels new but familiar. Um, and while I was playing it, it felt like I was playing a game that I used to play as a kid, you know. Damn the final boss. Yeah, so did I. Um, so I have a, I do have a way to, to span it. Um, the, uh, and I don't know if you found it either. I have the video. I have the video of it. Uh, it's a private video because when they, when they sent out the review copies, like they didn't want us to reveal the ending of the game. And I decided not to show the, the final boss. But I do have a video of me beating the final boss and like spamming, spamming him. Um... And I won't. I don't want to say it because Jim is is here, and he, I don't want him to be spoiled or anything. But if you want to see my video, let me know, and I'll send you the link to it. Um, and I'll be. I am very curious to see like what else has changed in the game because I thought they were going to add like another power up or something. Um, see, I want to keep going because because <laughs> why not? I'm at five hundred thousand. How far can we go in this? I've I've looped it six times. Um, but I'm also just enjoying talking to you folks. Um. 
You're not really focusing on much at the moment, Jim. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I, I shouldn't be playing anything because I'm, I'm really, I'm on a, a very tight deadline. But I've been po playing, poking a couple things. Like I played, you know, saw you saw I played uh, Space Shuttle Project and finished that. Um, it was kind of stuck in my head. I just wanted to finish it. Excuse me, because it felt like very doable. And um, I kind of had this idea. I, I took out Gremlins 2. I was kind of feeling like Gremlins 2 mood, probably because of Christmas. And I thought about finishing that, but I don't know if I will. And now that I have the um, the EverDrive um, N8 Pro Pro. I can play the uh, this this uh, Famicom Disk System game that I've been wanting to play um, called Dead Zone, which I couldn't play before because it, you have to switch to disk 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 side to save the game. You like you have to keep swapping between A and B, and I couldn't do that on the old EverDrive. And I can do it on the Mister, but I still prefer playing stuff on my AVS. And um, and the the, AV, the EverDrive Pro has a physical button that you can press to switch sides, so that's much much better. I think I hear my son coming up. Hey, is it bedtime? Not yet. Um, it's almost bedtime. Hold on one second, guys. I gotta get my kid to, to. Oh shoot! Uh, okay, I gotta get my kid to bed soon. So I'm just gonna finish this loop and then I'll take him up there. Send me a DM. Okay, cool. Do I like X-Men: First Class, Days of Future Past, Logan, Deadpool, and Deadpool 2? Oh, good night, Dizzy. Thank you for coming by. Have a good night. Have a good rest. Ugh, John. Yuck. Um, so, do I like X-Men: First Class? I think I liked First Class. I didn't like days of future past i liked the half of logan that my wife and i saw um but we didn't finish watching it and then the rental ran out so i have to go back to that um we stopped because she fell asleep um deadpool 1 2 surprisingly i like deadpool quite a bit and i like the nes uh, homebrew version of the, of the of the movie as well um yeah i don't know what else not much of a criticism. Are the bosses in Trophy a bit of bullet sponges? The clown boss seemed to take a long time to take out and figure out the pattern. I actually, so I, I also played that stage today, um, Jim, and I feel like, yes, the bosses in Trophy are bullet sponges. Um, the, uh, the clown, I think, was always a bullet sponge. It felt like it took me longer to beat him this time than it did the first time, but I'd have to go back to my, to like my stream or my footage. Um, because I hope they didn't make it even more of a bullet sponge. But yes, I'd say once you get the pattern down, then it just sort of becomes a little bit tedious. But some of the bosses are a little bit more challenging. Um, so the fact that they're bullet sponges makes it harder because you're um, you're uh, trying to survive. I would say most of the bosses are not not super hard. There was one really really hard boss in Trophy, which was in the junkyard. It was this magnet that would like grab you and. Um, they, I think they changed, I think they tweaked it because everyone kind of complained about that boss being too hard. Uh oh, am I about to die? No, I'm not about to die. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the bullet sponge, it's, it's, it's a thing. I had to replace the HDMI port of the Xbox One. I haven't seen that video yet. If I'm comparing to the videos from press testing videos, the final game is less so. Okay, interesting. But yeah, the, the, the clown is still a bullet sponge. Clown's definitely still a bullet sponge. And I'm gonna finish this loop and then I'm gonna call it. They made a way to break its magnetic grab, right? Okay. Yes. So, but the thing is that boss was hard, but I eventually figured out how to how to manipulate it a little bit, so I could get by it. Like, so I'm I'm, you know, it's fine if they want to make it so you can break the magnetic. Uh, because the because the trick for me was just not letting it grab you, like, and you can avoid it if you um, kind of fake it out a little bit and anticipate, you know, but anyway, whatever, it's fine. That was, that was, it was just that that was markedly different. That was markedly harder than all of the other bosses, which again, it's a Nintendo game, it's NES hard. You know, I, I wouldn't mind, I guess Project Blue has different hard modes in it, difficulty settings in it, right? I wouldn't mind if they had more hard modes in some of the games like they used to. Um, I feel like Trophy, if there was like, 
I guess you could ROM hack it or something and make it harder, I suppose. Because um, Trophy would, might be fun to have, like, a harder version of that game. Um, I really do. I really do like it. And it's not a, it's not really a, a big criticism of it, because I do... I, it's just fun to play, and it doesn't have to... The games don't have to be hard for it to be fun to play. Like, I, even in my review of Trophy, I, like, I pointed out, like, Power Blade, it's not a terribly difficult game, but I had so much fun playing it. Hey, Oak City! I'm so excited, man. Me? I'm always excited. Oh. <laughs> uh, doing okay. Doing okay. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I started, uh, yeah, Battle Kid has harder difficulty things. I had played that through on normal mode, and that was that was hard enough. Thank you. I'm not going to know Death Run Battle Kid, like, ever. Um, yeah, and it was also kind of nice to start stream a little earlier tonight. Like, I was just like, if I wait till my son's in bed, I won't get to start streaming until, like, 10 30 or 11 o'clock tonight and that means i'm definitely not going to get any writing done but if i stream while he's awake anyway if he just kind of does his own thing which he's been very good about doing these days um now that he's on christmas break and i don't have to harass him about schoolwork, um you know i could start streaming a little bit earlier i'm gonna keep you know any south in america at 10 o'clock because that's just it's just easier that way but uh it's nice to get to stream earlier in the evening for a change and get some get some more folks in here. Um, so we're going to finish this loop, the seventh loop, and uh, I'm going to call it a good night, unfortunately, because I know I'm pretty sure I could just, I could get a, uh, I could max out my score on this if I needed, if I wanted to. See, now this one, the one on the right, is getting more of the, uh, I'm not sure what what coding is, is happening here that determines. It's not random, per se. This one's only doing the right. The previous loop was only doing the, the middle one. I mean, I guess it's also doing the one on the left, but I'm only, I only care about these two. All right. Uh, so edits have been big in my world. Work on a passion video. Oh, cool! Very nice. Hey, zombie! Has zombie played Battle Kid? Cool. Very nice. COD Cold War. Cool. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, friends. Thank you so much for coming by and watching uh, this preview of a pretty fun homebrew game. Um, again, check out the Kickstarter. Uh, you can support it for as well, as little as you want. Um, the the cheapest uh, tier that you can you can do is ten dollars. That gets you something is the ROM, um, which is perfectly, um, which is awesome that that more Kickstarters are, are supporting that um, selling ROMs because I'm, I'm, I want to I want to install this on my EverDrive because then I can save my high score. Um, but yeah, and tomorrow night I'll be playing Spiritual Warfare ten o'clock Eastern, right here on YouTube. And uh, let's see, Oak City, thanks. This look cool. Oh, uh, awesome. Thank you. Pickups tomorrow after work. Very cool. Um, but yeah, have a good night, everyone. Tell your friends about this game. Check it out. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's always it's always fun, and uh, this seemed like a particularly enjoyable stream for me. <laughs> Eugene Hype. Is anybody streaming that we can um, that we can raid? Not sure who's streaming tonight. Because one of the ra main reasons I decided to stream it tonight instead of like next week is I thought Captain Algebra wasn't streaming. So let's see, who is streaming right now? Uh, is anyone streaming right now? That I subscribe to? Subscriptions, here we go. Uh, Ron Mower is streaming. Miss and Mr. Gaming is streaming. Is that it? Well, Ron Mower is playing a WWF game which has little interest to me for the N64. But if you decide to pop over there, Yugoslav is. Am I? Do I follow Yugoslav? Where is Yugoslav? Let me see. What is Yugoslav playing? Let me look this. Let, let me look them up. Yugoslav. I should be following them, but it's not coming up. Yugoslav video game nerd. Let's see here. Astral Chains Part Two. No, that's not live though. Streamed six hours ago. Oh, is live with Rystar. Yes, let's go. Let's go read Yugoslav. Um, oops. Shh. Shh. 
I'm not subscribed to Yugoslav, but I have just fixed that. Let's go read Yugoslav video ner game nerd. Um, can I put their channel in my chat? Let's see. Do you know? Share. All right, I'm gonna put their th them in my chat. Hold on a second here. Uh, I don't usually do this. All right, Yugoslav, pause that. Shh. And uh, I will not hang out much because I have to go um, take take my son to to bed. But um, say hi for me. I'll pop in and like. I think I've already liked it, like the video. But go say hi. Let's raid uh, Yugoslav if you can hang out for a little bit more. Give him some views. I hear my son coming back downstairs with uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, so I gotta go. All right, good night, folks. Hopefully, I'll see some of you tomorrow night. If I don't, have a happy new year um, and have a good rest of the week. All right, take care. Bye bye.